Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at action bars in Android. So I've created a, a new project here with the default settings and I made sure that this project had a minimum SDK version of 11, which is Android 3, because action bars were actually introduced in Android 3. And the action bar is this thing across the top here, this bar across the top, which usually has an icon and a title and by default it has a menu here and if I just touch that menu this is assuming that you're you're running a device which is uh, Android 3 or greater of course and then if I touch this menu here we're just going to get this settings um, item popping up we're going to look at responding to menu item selections in the next tutorial but here I just want to show you how to configure and create these menus in your action bar and I want to tell you um, give you a couple of things you can do with action bars so one thing you can do is if you go to your main activity in the uh, on, in the on create method here you can say action bar bar equals get action bar so you can retrieve a reference to the action bar and you can then do stuff like if you want you can hide it altogether make it invisible and you can um, have your application dynamically hide or show the action bar completely during its operation although when you show it uh, or hide it then your um, your layout is going to be kind of uh, recreated so uh, you, you kind of have to be aware of that but uh, basically you can hide or show the action bar just as you just as you feel just as you want to you can also, um, this action bar here, you'll see it's got a, a title and an icon and you can hide or show those separately as well. And if you want to get rid of the icon, you can say bar dot set display home, uh, home enabled, here we go, and I could say false. And that will get rid of that icon. And if I say bar dot set display display title show title enabled set that to false we won't have a title either so let's just run that and have a look and sometimes this can be good because uh, sometimes depending on what you're showing in your in your activity sometimes I find it's just really ugly to have an icon and a title there you don't always want it so it's good to be able to get rid of them Okay, here we go. So the application's running, and now you can see we've got rid of the icon and the title. Let's have a look at this menu here, which is the really interesting bit. And uh, everything I'm about to say would certainly apply if you did have an icon and title as well. I just wanted to show you how you could get rid of that if you want to. So by default, if I look at this, I've just got a kind of settings menu here, and we nothing actually really happens. But I could, as we'll see in the next tutorial, I could respond to the user clicking on that settings thing and I could make something happen in response to that. You can configure this menu quite easily yourself. Where it actually is configured is if you look at this on create options menu and prior to Android 3 this would have created a menu that appears at the bottom of your screen but uh, for Android 3 and greater at least if you have the default theme set it produces the action bar at the top so if you look at this, we're using a resource, r.menuActivity underscore main. And uh, so if we go to resource res menu activity main.xml, this is the menu that's producing that settings pop up when you touch this. So let's, let's have a look at that. Here it is. And if I look at the raw XML view, it looks like this. It's just got one item in it. And that item has the title... Um, well, we don't know the title from looking at this, but we can see that it's using a string resource called Menu Settings. So if we go to Values, Strings.xml, and we look at uh, Menu Settings, we see that it's got the text settings on it, and that's where that's coming from. So it's a little bit convoluted, but once you understand this, uh, how it works with the, the Strings.xml and the um, activity main XML or, or the menu XML then it, it's, uh, it is pretty straightforward. Now we can um, 
create menus and submenus in all kinds of ways with this action bar and I'm not going to show you everything that can be done but I just want to show you a few highlights so if you go to this activity main XML under menu here it's important to get the right one you want the actual menu that has this item in it and we go to layout uh, so I'm looking at the kind of Android um, the Eclipse sort of GUI version of this menu rather than trying to work with it myself in the XML we can, if you click, if you select this top level thing here, um, well, we can remove it actually. We could get rid of it altogether. And, uh, but if you click add, you see you can add a submenu to it as well. And this submenu would, would then appear when you go to that settings menu. Let's, let's actually just remove it for the moment. So I'll click remove. And then if we, we save that and we look at the, um, the raw XML view, you can see that it's, the item's gone. We go back to layout. Let's start building up a menu from scratch. So if I click add now, and I, in fact, um, I've got a choice here between item and group. And groups are groups of items, which you can, if you want to, simultaneously enable or disable, show or hide or check or uncheck altogether. But one use of a group is to create a bunch of top level items that if you want, you could make appear in your action bar by default. So if you've got a bunch of actions that you want to always be immediately available to your user, kind of stirring them right there in the face, then providing there's room for them, you can put them all up here, um, visible all the time on the action bar. And let's, let's have a look at that. And to do that, to create a bunch of top level items, uh, it, it seems we need to put them in a group. Um, it seems that you have to do that because if I add an item here, let's say, now if I click add again with that item selected, I can only add a submenu. And what I want to show you here is having a, a row of items on the top. So let's remove that and click add and I'll add this group even though I don't need a group. And then to that group, I'll add a couple of items. So I select the group and I click add and let's have one item here and click select the group and click add again and a second item and I can give these items of course IDs but I'll, I'll leave these at the default ID for the moment I could change this from item one to something else and you could give it you can see an icon and a title and all that kind of thing it's quite a lot of stuff here but I'll just give this a title and I'll call it something like uh, let's just call it go very ambiguous because I don't know what this would is supposed to do it's just an example and I'll go to item two and let's call this uh, something like um, edit. Let's call it edit, why not? So just, just for an example. So now we've got two items called go and edit. And we can, if we look down here, we've got a property show as action. And if you show something as an action, it means that it appears here on the action bar where currently we've only got these three dots. So um, if I select, let's say item one, go to show as action and go to select, then I can say that I want it never to appear as a kind of separate action, like uh, visible on the action bar by itself by default. Or I can make it appear up there if there's room, or I can always have it there and I can have it with text or not. Um, so let's select always so that it's always gonna be there. And I'll do the same for item two and you'll see what effect having it always there um, has. And if, if you're in doubt about whether there's enough room for it, because you've got a title on there, let's say, then of course you're gonna have to be careful and perhaps select if room. So I'll, I'll save this and click run and launch it on my phone. And the other thing that I'm gonna show you uh, in this tutorial is just the effect of adding a submenu to one of these items. And next time we are going to look on, we're going to look at handling, uh, what, hand, making things happen when the user clicks one of these items. Oh, I was going to pause the recording, but it looks like it's going pretty fast. So let's take a look. I can see it on my phone and let's go to the screencast. Here we are. So now we've got these um, action items at the top, go and edit, and they don't do anything because I'm not making anything happen, happen in response to them. But one thing I want to show you here is how you can also have a submenu. So let's go to item two 
which um, which is I've called edit and um, of course those could be really nice icons as well they don't have to be text I could create a really nice little icon for them and uh, I'll select edit and click add and now we've got the option to add a sub menu so I could add a sub menu and I click add again and uh, let's just have a couple of items so if you've got a sub menu you don't need to put your items in a group you just need to put them in a group for a sub menu if you want to be able to show or hide them all all together or check them all together or something and then I think you would need a group but if you've got a sub menu you can just add items straight into it so I'll have a item 3 here I'll, again I'll just leave this ID I think in fact let's let's maybe change this to uh, this is the what is it it's the edit menu so I could call this um, edit contact or something like that maybe let's change this to edit um, contact and change the title here to contact and save that and then I'll add another item into the sub menu click add another item so parallel with the first here in this sub menu and here so the first one was edit contacts and this could be edit um, oh god knows edit photo or something I'm really running out of um, ideas that are plausible <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll change it to edit photo and let's make the title photo and uh, then I'll, I'll I'll show you how this looks and you'll see it. it's pretty simple and um, just if you just play around with this you'll, you'll get the hang of it really quickly and you can basically accomplish whatever you need to so uh, I'm not sure if that's actually running and one thing I find is sometimes this I don't know if it's just today it seems not to be running but I'm just gonna when I click run let's just go to project clean and because if I delete all the, um, the class files that have been generated then that's going to force it as long as project build automatically is ticked then it will regenerate them and now when I click run we should damn well see some something happening there we go that's better okay so I'll, I'll pause the recording and come back in just a second okay so here we go and uh, hopefully I'm recording this <laughs> yeah I think I am good so uh, now we've got a go and we've still got like those go and edit items and the go item is still as it is before but if I click edit uh, now this sub menu comes up with contact and photo and I can take action on those and of course again I could have um, a sub menu in the sub menu if I wanted I'm going to leave it there for this tutorial because that's I think that's all the most important stuff covered really and in the next tutorial we're going to look at making stuff happen when one of those items is selected. So until next time, happy coding.